Hello, so this will be our um, flexible body uh, video. This is uh, lecture five, uh, the demo. Um, so this is quite an involved uh, demo and um, it, it showcases everything from creating the flexible body in the, in the pre-post application all the way to bringing it to the motion application and evaluating some results. So if you look at this model, uh, as you can see, we are in the motion environment. So this is a motion model. There's a, a ground link. We've got, and then we've got two other links that are uh, free to just rotate. Uh, there's a, a revolute joint there and a revolute joint there. Uh, here you can see there is, uh, I, I did put a constraint in here, uh, but it is inactive. It's, it doesn't currently work. Um, I just switched that off uh, for this simulation. So. Uh, just to just to show you, um, I'll just quickly solve this model, and we can see that this is the type of motion we have at this stage. And now we are going to move over to make this this flexible. I've decided to make this link flexible, so we can we can start this process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the modeling environment. So I'm going to go application modeling. The reason I do this is because I actually want to select this this link to be the displayed part in order for me to create a mesh for it and so on. Okay, so I can I can now go to this assembly. So you can see that there's two models. I'll just quickly unpack these. So there's it's the same model used being used in two two places, but this instance is the one that I'm going to edit. So I'm just going to go make displayed part. So making this display part puts it in a different window. So if I go to window here, you can see that it's model 2 and motion 2 is the other side. So here we've got model 2 and now we can go take this model to the FEM or meshing environment. So if I go to application, I select pre-post. Pre-post is our uh, pre and post processor for simulation. Um, and this is what we will use in order to create the flexible body analysis. So if I select pre-post, it takes us to the pre-post application window where we can then specify that we want to create a new uh, FEM model as well as a new simulation model. Um, what's also uh, must be said is that uh, this environment, in, in, in case you get some more complex geometry, this environment will allow you to uh, clean up some of your geometry. Here we can see uh, this is the pre-post application and we can see there's some cleaning uh, geometry cleanup tools. We're not looking at that in this case. We're just going to use the geometry as is. So here we can see that it says new FEM and simulation. So I can just click that model and or that, that option, that command. And first of all, we're going to get a window that asks us a little bit about which, which type of simulation we want to run. So here we can see uh, the file names that we're going to create is uh, FEM and SIM file. Uh, .fem.sim file and we can also see it asks us to create an idealized part. So in this instance we're not looking at, at this section so uh, by default this box is ticked. Uh, I just unticked it. Um, uh, idealized part is as I said if you've got a little bit more complex geometry and you need to clean up fillets and, and, and um, some small radii or small features then this is the place to do it. You create idealized part uh, which means you don't edit your master part. Um, and you can do the simulation on that but in this case we're just going to use the master part nothing wrong with that and we're going into the solver environment is, uh, is we're using the NX Nashtrans solver it's going to be a structural analysis and after that there's nothing more that we have to specify so we can just say okay to this the next dialog that we will see is the solution dialog so so we said we're using the NX Nashtrans solver and now it's asking us which solution type um, the solution type is important because we have to now go and specify that we want to create a flexible body model. And uh, we can see that uh, this updated a little bit. The next important thing is here by flexible body export options, we need to specify that we are using not the Recodyne solver on the motion side, we're using the Sim Center motion solver. Uh, this is just how, how this uh, application will output some of its result files. And from here we can select OK. Um, now that is specified, we're not going to edit anything else at this stage, and we can say OK again. Okay, so seeing this, 
uh, we can see that the current active file is the .fem file and this is the meshing, meshing side of things. So we've got a mesh side here uh, specifying uh, which different meshes we can apply to this model and here if we go into these properties we can add some materials. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mesh to it. Uh, I'm just going with a normal te 3D tetrahedral. A better mesh for this will might, might be a hex mesh but I'm just going to stick with 3D tetrahedral. Okay, so we're going with uh, uh, te 10 elements, which means there are 10 nodes in the element. And we can just uh, specify this body. And this is automatic element size. So it says 13. Um, normally this is a good quick indication, but we, we normally just divide that by roughly, roughly 2 and uh, to get a, a relatively okay mesh. So I can quickly mesh this model. And here we've got a mo model that is now meshed. And the most important thing that we have to realize now is how will this interface with what is happening on the motion side. So we need to create two points where this model would, will attach to our motion model. So we, we do that by use of a 1D connection. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just quickly going to create a point or two points rather. So I'm going to create a point between two points right there. So I'm going to select that edge, this edge. There we get a point there nice in the middle. I say apply and the same on the other side and I say OK. So there we've got our two points. Now we're going to create something called a 1D connection or, or, or a spider connection. So I select that spider connection and the type I set to point to edge. OK, so it can also be point to face. Uh, that's another option. I'm just going to go uh, point to edge. And so if I start off with selecting that point and then I select these two edges. I make sure that this is RBE2, a uh, rigid body element, and I select OK. And there you can see there's a spider element that is created there. Um, I can select it here from the side in, one, in my 1D collector, and I can see that everything, there, there are elements created from the point to the edge. Okay, And we'll do the same on this side. So you're going new 1D element, uh, let me just unselect the other part, and uh, we go. 1D element, we choose that point, we choose this edge, and it's again point to edge, uh, RBE2, and we can say OK. Same is created on that side. The next important bit is just to specify which material we're going to use. I'm going to go to this properties, more, assign material, I'll select this body, and I'm just going to make it of ABS plastic, and I'll say OK. So there everything is specified the way we need to. So we can take it over to our simulation side where we can specify which loads will be imposed onto this model. So I'll just activate the simulation. Um, that's a quick way to jump between the two. And you can see now we can start specifying loads and loads and boundary conditions. So we're just going to add uh, two constraints, which is this fixed boundary constraints, degrees of freedom. So we select that point right there and we make sure all of them are fixed. And we apply and the same on the other side and we make sure all of them are fixed and we say OK. So there we've created our loads and boundary conditions and then we can quickly solve this model uh, for uh, flex. So same as on the motion side we can right click here and then click solve. And so this model setup check will just quickly evaluate if, if the way you set up the model is fine uh, whether you added some material or, or not or whatever the case may be. Um, so we're going to go OK. So you can see this first dialog that pops up. This uh, gives the results of um, the model setup check. And then after that, it will write uh, the deck to the solver. And here we can see our solution monitor popping up. And yet we, we're starting to get some output from our, from our solver. And we, we can just wait for this to end. So after the model has been completed, uh, we can see this review results. Um, if you're interested in this, in these values or this information, you can just say yes. Otherwise, it will close by itself, or you can just specify no, and it will close um, as well. So this is, as I said, the the deck uh, or the, the some of the information that we get uh, after our model setup check, and now we can just close that. We can close this, and now we've got this results that we can just double, double click. 
So for a flex body, it calculates uh, a, a few modes for us. So in terms of um, mode shapes, so we can just select our first one. The, the first six here um, is rigid body modes. Uh, so it just means it will rotate about an axis. There, there is no deformation in the model. So this uh, number seven is our first uh, proper mode, and we, I can just double click that displacement, and we can see uh, that is the mode. Um, one way to also nicely visualize this is to just go to animate. We go here to modal. Uh, I'm specifying number of frames is 30, uh, and then just a small gap between the time. And we say full cycle, and I can play that, and we can see that is the that is the mode that is created. So we can we can have a, evaluate some other modes as well, and we can see this is the different modes that are at play in this model. So now we can return home and we remember to save. So we can either save up here or we can press Control S. So I'm just going to save up there and now our FEM body is finished. The next step is to take this to the, to the uh, motion environment. So I'm going to go up here to our window and we go to Motion Sim 2. So you'll see we've got two sim models. The top one is for, our, um, uh, for this FEM analysis. Uh, or the the um, yes the mesh, meshed frame analysis and the other one is for our rigid body uh, or multi-body dynamics analysis. If I select that, it brings me to this environment and now I can start specifying what needs to happen. So it brought me back to modeling. I'm just going to go to our motion environment where we can then specify which link is our um, flexible link. Okay, so we're back in our motion environment. And now we can say that we are going to add an another solution to this model. So I'm going to right click uh, motion 2. I'm going to say new solution. And I want it to create a flexible body solution um, of, this, of this time. And I can just say OK. Uh, the gravity is working in the correct direction. I can say OK to that. Next we have to specify that we want a flexible link. So I can select a flexible link and now I specify the, the link. Now very important, I have to browse to the correct file where I s s solved my model. Okay, Okay. so if I click here, we're looking for a .op2 file. Uh, this is the results file from, from our NX Nashtran. So we can see this is our, uh, this first uh, point uh, or this first uh, browser, that window that we get. Um, this This is our current motion simulation home so if I go one up in my case I can just see okay there's my OP2 file I can select it I can say okay and we can see the mesh is already placed in the correct position if we go to connections here we can see that um, the markers uh, or the joints that we created for motion are coinciding with the um, with the 1D element connections that we created in the mesh environment uh, and everything else is in order and we can now say okay uh, what I normally do is I just hide the solid so I just go to my quick pick and I just say hide the solid so that I can just see the meshed model now as simple as going to right click solve we can solve this model you will however see that the solving on on, on these on, on these flexible bodies are a bit longer uh, than a normal uh, than a normal run in in motion, but it is, however, a lot faster than than uh, simulating a fem um, for all of these different time steps. Uh, it, one should also just remember that uh, the, the, uh, what accuracy um, assumptions are made if you use a flexible body. Uh, flexible bodies are created with this um, with multiple mode shapes um, and superimposing those those mode shapes onto each other in order to estimate a certain stress so here we've got our solution we've got our results now we can go play these results it takes it takes a while just to to uh, import the all the necessary information and and uh, analysis we can see that happens a bit fast okay so the reason for for the the funny analysis is the fact that when I switched over to solution three, uh, this 
constraint wasn't deactivated as you can see if I switch to solution one it's it this is still inactive so we go to solution three and I can just deactivate uh, that constraint and now I can solve this model again this flexible body model and we will be able to see that indeed in this case it will it will solve properly so we're just waiting for it to complete we can see at the bottom here we've got a progress uh, progress bar that just shows us uh, at, at which point of the simulation our model is currently at and we are almost there we are done so then we can go have a look at the results in this case uh, again uh, just displaying displaying all of the all of the uh, structural analysis um, results just takes a bit longer than the usual uh, normal run which makes entirely sense and there we can see exactly the 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 type of uh, analysis we thought we'd see and we can see some color color deformations um, throughout that that model and this is the way that you will create a flexible body in the NX motion application this concludes the section.